Friday, October 4th, 2019, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So it's almost 8.30 here in Florence, Italy. We still have an hour and a half to go until the markets close. Uh, this evening, I want to talk about the Federal Reserve. I was looking at some numbers earlier, uh, and I'm going to show you the numbers. The Federal Reserve has actually uh, increased its balance sheet by stealth since uh, September 5th to October 3rd by $185 uh, billion. And I've just seen uh, a headline on Zero Hedge just a few minutes ago. New York Fed announces extension of overnight repos until November 4th. We'll offer eight more term repos. So before I go into uh, the Fed's balance sheet and this latest story about the repo, I just want to say that uh, tomorrow uh, my wife and I are planning to go to Pisa, uh, famous for the Leaning Tower, of course. Uh, it's very easy to get there from here. We just got have to walk to the train station in Florence and uh, it takes about an hour uh, by train, and the trains are quite regular. Uh, what's uh, so important about uh, Pisa, though, uh, for the markets and technical analysis, and even for arithmetic and uh, the numeric system that we use? Well, uh, it's the home of uh, Leonardo uh, Pisano. Uh, he's also known as Fibonacci, uh, I've spoken and I speak a lot about technical analysis, the Fibonacci sequence, the Fibonacci retracements, the 61.8%, the 38.2%. And uh, Leonardo uh, from Pisa, Fibonacci was uh, a name that was uh, given to him by a historian uh, in the 1800s who wrote about him because he was the, the son of Bonacci. Filius Bonacci, so he called him Fibonacci, but his real name was Leonardo. He was born in 1170 at the time in Europe. Uh, they're still using the Roman numerals, which are quite difficult uh, difficult to use in calculating. Uh, no zero on it, uh, I don't think, either. So he, uh, his father was a merchant, he used to uh, trade around the Mediterranean, and he used to go along with him, and that's how he uh, learned about the Hindu-Arabic uh, numeric system. So he was very important. So there is a statue of him there near the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So I'm hopefully uh, we'll get there tomorrow, uh, have a look around, and have a look at uh, Fibonacci or Leonardo Pizzano, they call them as well. So the market, uh, non-farm payroll, it came out just a little lower than expected, I think, like 130,000. It was expected 140. So no big deal there. But the, I think the uh, things that are important to look at is the fact that uh, hourly earnings uh, came out at zero month on month, increase of 0.0%. .0%. It was expected to rise by 0.3%. And we all know that the Federal Reserve, they use that as an excuse uh, to set policy, monetary policy. Uh, the way they come across it is that uh, rising wages are inflationary. Uh, they don't like to say that it's a consequence of their policies, but uh, they will use this as an excuse uh, to cut rates, and I think that's what the markets are looking at. Uh, I made a comment on Twitter earlier today after I saw the numbers that uh, it was a perfect number for uh, President Trump because unemployment rate actually dropped to a 50-year low of 3.5%. It was expected 3.7%. So President Trump can still say uh, there's a great economy, right? But... Uh, the Fed can say, oh, there's no inflation, we're going to keep cutting rates. So why do you need to keep cutting rates if there's a great economy? Uh, because I don't think there is a great economy, and I think the economy is so dependent on the wealth effect, on the uh, paper market bubble or credit bubble, stock market bubble, 
that uh, they can't afford to let ra rates rise and they need to cut it to keep the markets elevated or else everything will implode. I think that's the reason why. So right now, as I speak here, around 8.30 p.m. Florence time, which is 2.30 uh, p.m. New York, the Dow is up 287. So the markets now are seeing uh, a definite move uh, to lower rates. Uh, with the stock market going up like this, you would expect yields to be going up, but they're not. The 10 year yield is uh, approaching 150. It's at 152. It's down about one and a half basis point. The three month yield is down 1.3 basis points at 170. So yeah, uh, this is not a good signal in my opinion. Markets and speculators, investors, probably thinking, yeah, we're gonna get more easy money but it's not a good signal for the economy. Uh, what about gold and silver? Well, gold and silver were trading quite well before the numbers, and usually they get hit, whatever the number is, non-farm payroll, but I'm surprised that gold has held quite well. We dropped below 1500 earlier, and right now we're at 1505 silver, so which is basically unchanged. Silver is around 1752, which is down only a couple of cents. So they're doing quite well, and I think they will continue to do well. And that's in spite of the, in spite of the fact that uh, the stock markets are, are doing so well. So let's have a look at the Fed's balance sheet, which is public information. And I'll put a link to it below in the description, and you can look at the different dates. So let's look at the Fed's balance sheet. It's public information. I'll put a link below to it uh, in the description. Uh, September 5th, so about a month ago, Fed's balance sheet, as you can see here, I highlighted it, 3,809,235 million or 3.809 trillion. And now, October 3rd, that's the latest publication of the data. We are at uh, 3,993,725 3, uh, thousand. So... That's almost four trillion. It's up just under 185 billion. The Fed's doing a QE again. One of the reasons I'm talking about this now, I was gonna talk about this tomorrow, is that there's a story that's just come out that the New York Fed has just announced that they're gonna extend overnight repos until November 4th. We'll offer eight more term repos. So things are not great. <laughs> in the US banking system or the international banking system because if you look at the primary dealers at the New York Fed, they're not only American banks, they're British banks, uh, they're German banks, French banks, Japanese banks from all over the world. So the Fed was only supposed to keep doing these overnight repos until October 10th. So now they're gonna do it for another month almost and they're gonna offer more, uh, eight more of these term repos. So what's Zero Hedge saying here? Let's have a look at their article. Anyone who expected that the easing of the quarter end funding uh, squeeze in the repo market would mean the Fed would gradually fade its interventions in the repo market was disappointed on Friday afternoon today when the New York Fed announced it would extend the duration of overnight repo operations with a total size of 75 billion. So they've kept 75 billion. They could change that if things get worse. We saw them change it to 100 billion a few days ago. Um, so the plan is 75 billion, right? For at least another month, while also offer no less than eight two week term repo operations until November 4th, 2019, which confirms that the funding unlocked via term, term repos is no longer merely a part of the quarter and arsenal, but an integral part of the Fed's overall temporary, they put it in brackets, temporary open market operations, which are starting to look quite permanent. So, this is what they say at the end. As I said, it's a stealth QE. 
Zero Hedge says, and remember, whatever you do, don't call it QE4. I've said many times in the last few years uh, that uh, eventually the Fed would not be able to normalize interest rates like they were prior to the 08 crisis. Uh, historically, in the last 250 years, interest rates have averaged between 5 and 6%. Uh, I, I don't think they can ever go back there. <laughs> and the other thing that uh, they can't, can't afford not to do anymore is print money or keep doing QE. It looks like with the greatest economy uh, in 50 years, lowest un unemployment in 50 years, the Federal Reserve has to provide hundreds of billion uh, of fresh money uh, regularly to the banking sector. So what is wrong? Uh, a lot is wrong. So. Uh, what do we do? Well, we, we keep trying to get out of this system as much as possible, be outside the banking system and paper assets, as I've said many times before. Stick to uh, physical precious metals. Try to avoid um, dealing with the banks. Try to avoid uh, debt. Try to, try to get out of that as much as possible and have tangible assets. And try to live within your means as well. I think you, you need to have a, a budget and no, and uh, not uh, be like the U.S. Treasury and run uh, endless deficits and accumulate insurmountable debts, right? You've got to do the opposite of what they're doing. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm looking forward to going to Pisa tomorrow. Uh, to, I've never been there. Have a look at the Leaning Tower. And more importantly, uh, have a look at uh, Fibonacci's uh, statue. Hopefully, I'll make another video tomorrow about Fibonacci. Um, this is my second video today. I think uh, the other day I did a video towards uh, the close of the market or after the close, and people enjoyed that. This is not exactly the close, but it's towards the close. Uh, so there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and you can also follow me on Twitter, Steam it, and on DTube. I wish you all a great weekend. Take care. Bye.